Hey guys, welcome to our review of Agatha All Along. This is the mid-season review, which is going to continue from our premiere review, and this is going to cover episodes 3, 4, and 5. So, uh, what did you guys think of the uh, 3, 4, and 5, how Agatha is going? Eh, it's an okay show. Um, uh, if we weren't watching it, I probably wouldn't pick it up. Uh, I thought the third episode was probably the weakest one for me during one of the trials. Uh, I was hoping they would kind of go for a horror element on this one, but it was like, it was, yeah, it's silly. That's kind of the tone, but the previous one was more horror kind of thing. I was mm -hmm. hoping for that, but the third trial was, uh, kind of weak. I'm sad we had to kill off one of my faves. <laughs> Yeah, I knew, I knew that was going to be a problem for you because she was one of my faves, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, but so far, it's just, it is what it is. I'm just tired of it. Yeah. yeah. I, All right. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think it started strong, and there were some things that I was really liking in the first couple episodes. Three was okay. I hated four. Like, I hated it. Um, and then five, I, I don't know. It, it's just I, there was a cool direction they could have gone with it. Yeah. And I think that they went the more silly. Disney. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, it's a Marvel thing, right? So like, that Marvel has done things that are more serious. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just it's like all kid kid yeah. show stuff all the time. And like they were they were teasing a direction in episode three. It was like this could be really cool. Uh, and then they just did something in episode four that's like, I don't watch this episode, this series anymore. I'm just fucking done. I hate musicals. So you guys knew I would hate episode four, which is a bunch of singing and the, you know incorporating that. The rock ballad. Thing. Come on. I, I you, also you like hate rock, rock ballads. ballads. <laughs> There's the third one. So breaking out into song, interpretive dance, and rock ballads, I, I'm not into. Uh, but yeah, I'm actually kind of on uh, more... Uh, Alex's level because I thought episode three was well written, well directed, well acted, and it's kind of improving with each episode. We liked uh, kind of we hated one. One really stumbled. I can see yeah. why people were like, "I oh, fuck this show and I'm not gonna watch it." Two was interesting. Had 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 a good premise, so I was hoping they'd keep the momentum going. They have. Uh, then episode four was uh, rather annoying for me. I, I get I get what they're going for, but again. I don't really like that kind of rock ballad shit. And that was almost the entire episode. Yeah. And then episode five, um, it was it was good. It was all right. It is serviceable. Uh, has a, a ending with implications for the MCU. Um, and I, I guess I am willing to see where it goes. But I, I enjoy these characters. And I think this is um, kind of an interesting series in the sense, you know, do, hmm. Do you guys believe that some shows can be well written, you know, well directed, and also completely not for you? Yes. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, that. I mean, that's kind of you know what what I'm feeling a little bit here. Um, that I recognize the good writing. I recognize, and I laugh from time to time. I'm having a good time, and uh, and I can see the direction is good. Like. I'd rather watch these episodes of Agatha all along than Rings of Power if you were forcing me to. But Rings of Power actually is a little more interesting for me now because it's like it's so fucking bad. It's like destroying, you know, the lore and it is a colossal. I feel like that with my movies. Mess up. Right. Your B mo <laughs> you watch these Z grade movies yeah, because you're fascinated you find some little at gems how bad they can be <laughs> and what next fuck up is around the corner like yes. Lisa Batman. You know, um, and so that in that element, I you know, Rings of Power is fascinating. Uh, but yeah, so we'll, we'll continue to kind of update you guys. So this is the, uh, you know, we'll also do with Penguin uh, mid-season review. This is our mid-season review of um, Agatha all along. And it's entertaining. If you, if you're into Hocus Pocus, um, you know, more Hocus Pocus 1 than Hocus Pocus 2, and you're in the Halloween spirit and mood, and you don't mind witches and brews and trials and uh, some of the Wanda Vision format where they're going from different eras. Uh, they go one episode, they'll uh, get a costume change, and they'll yeah. look like the 80s. 
A previous one is the 70s uh, and stuff like that. And then one was Desperate Housewives. So uh, those were our three episodes. Desperate Housewives, uh, rock ballads and, and 70s groovy stuff. And then finally, uh, you know, Exorcist, uh, 80s, Slumber, I think that can't Ouija be, Board. Uh, Joe, Ouija uh, Board. I was thinking for the last one, it was a campy Jason vibe, Friday 13th yeah. kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so like, no, I'm, no Ouija board. I'm actually, you know, surprisingly enjoying enjoying it um i i'm interested in where uh this all goes i i think it's going i i can kind i have a theory that we could talk about here in the episode breakdown i think it's really going to culminate in agatha rio if i got her name right yes. yeah and uh uh the uh, teen, teen character uh and then tying it into wandavision as they said there's a trilogy uh wandavision this and then the upcoming uh vision something i forget what the thing was called uh but yeah so um yeah if you're in, in the mood for it uh you know uh yeah pretty good uh you know wavering here and there yeah and uh let's see I, i'd say that there was you know big online discourse oh this is gonna be garbage and stuff like that so far through episode five there's really nothing here yeah, that's once it's garbage. outwardly yeah. uh you know annoying or or, or message centric and things like that it's just um you know directed very heavily towards uh you know a market they see an opportunity can can we bring in some females here can we bring in some the craft enjoyers the the, the film the craft it's just uh, a hocus, hocus, hocus pocus, pocus. Um, and sort of uh i guess like you know feeder feeder kids and stuff uh, with all those rock ballads <laughs> so uh let's go into uh so i guess uh, yeah. If I were to give a mid-season, okay. let's go ahead and give a mid-season score where we think it stands right now. This is a completely made-up score, okay, because it doesn't apply to anything. <laughs> uh, then we'll go into our breakdown with, and, and give each episode a, a, a score. So I'm thinking uh, if I go back, hopefully I wrote this down. I did it. <laughs> so, no, I did. Uh, episode 1 was a 4 out of 10 for me. Episode 2, I think, was an 8 out of 10. So if I and so if I were to give sort of the the premiere and overall maybe to a five, six yeah. you know kind of average that out to a six, um, I'm going to say that the mid season, some improvements there in episode three, episode four, five. I'm gonna go overall six out of ten is what I'm thinking for mid season. What do you guys think? Uh, for me, I'm going to give this a five. Um, I was hoping for a little bit something better than what we've gotten so far. There's a lot of like things I don't like the direction that they're going with. We'll break we'll talk it down. About it and break yeah. Down, yeah, but uh, the characters I like. I like the characters. They're yeah. I like their chemistry and stuff like that. I kind of hope they would have played a little bit more in between. Yeah, I'm, but, I could lower my score because if Miss Hart. <laughs> if one of the characters was it, it's just gone and then gonna show up last last minute i'm gonna lower my score yeah i'm at a five right now like i understand it but it's like uh, I, uh, yeah i'm good i think my my expectations were a lot lower just because what i've heard and i i didn't care about it and i'm enjoying myself so it's, that's kind of what i'm thinking yeah i also think five i didn't like episode one i don't like episode four i like episode two and three so there's kind of like a wash there mm -hmm. and then the final episode i think that there was some good stuff but there was also some stuff that um that i just didn't like a as much um it it's more that i just recognize that this isn't for me like they're not making <laughs> it with me in mind and so there's times when they're they're having a great time and i know that there's people at home enjoying the songs there's people at home enjoying how campy Damn. and how almost like or like uh mid-stage sam raimi things were like remember watching xena and you'd hit a guy and you go zoinks it's like that kind of stuff i'm not interested in it at all and there's that i get that feeling here where it's trying to be goofy and it's trying to be silly and then in episode two and three, they kind of, they took it more seriously. And like, I was really enjoying the Agatha character because she's snarky and I really, and in episode three, they start going into their backstories and there's some really interesting and almost like cool horror elements mm -hmm. that just completely get abandoned in the next couple episodes. And so that's when I was like half right, half wrong, dead even five. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree. The horror elements drop off. They come back and a bit in episode five but everything has the disney veneer so it's never going to get threatening it's it's just going to be like oh cool i, I like that yeah. i like that witch curse costume that's a cool creature effect 
uh, oh, I like this homage to The Exorcist. She did the crab walk. The makeup effects are, are, are good. Mm. And, and we move on. So there's some artistry here. Um, but okay, so that's, that's where we're at. Um, and uh, let's go to episode three. So this is through many miles of tricks and trials. I'm going to go relatively quick here. This focuses on Jen, yes. the potions witch. They find a house. Their attire changes, and they got the clock ticking down. So I'm like, oh, okay, so this is what the show is going to be. And from that point, I was like, okay, I bet you there's going to be a trial every single yeah. uh, episode. episode. Now, I'm not familiar with the worlds of Real Housewives or, or no, Desperate Housewives. I'm not sure which show, you know, they're doing or wine talk reality tv stuff um and i actually mostly don't like that shit but uh I'm here in this I'm episode down for wind down wednesdays really? mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't like that stuff but here in this episode it done in that style it worked it was interesting um i enjoyed it so i guess i i can understand why those shows are popular if if they have elements that stuff was here i like the camp here something i wrote three weeks ago four weeks ago whenever this came out the horror elements yeah they're not that scary okay let's be real but it's more slasher vibes at least in that episode that i liked um, you know, st stuff like uh, their blown up faces, their fucking plastic, superficial, gonzo beauty that, that some, some women attempt. It truly don't is do horrific. That. Don't, do don't, that. don't do that. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad they kind of played with that. Yeah. They, they make fun. They made fun of female vanity and, and uh, Botox horror stuff. So I, I like that. And, um, the hallucinations, I thought, were the high, the high point of the series so far. So we get one where Jen is the potions witch. We get some of her backstory later on, but we find out that this dude like dr almost drowns her in a sink. And there's like it, there's some tension there. And you're like, cool, I want to know more about these characters. I'm fascinated with stuff. And we get stuff from uh, the security guard lady with like her mom lighting herself on fire yeah. type stuff. So there's really interesting stuff. And then we abandon it for two and a half episodes. Well, I mean, I guess 2.1. Because oh, yeah. at, the, at the end of this episode, it goes away. And then it doesn't show up in episode four. Because that episode, was, in my opinion, it was, it was. It showed up in episode four. It was just garbage. Oh, I didn't like it. Oh yeah, I don't think there was tension. Like I wasn't. I wasn't right, bought right. into it. It was yeah, like it was so much more about the ballad than it was about the interesting fire. What, what I find interesting, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. how I know that it's like, hey, if someone tells me they love the show, cool. Yeah. If someone says they hate the show, I get it. It's just like this. I don't think this is directly for me. And unless we go back to that, the stuff that was in this episode in particular. I don't even Agreed. Know why. I don't yeah, we had a little vignette. Each little character get, yes. kind of gets separated, and they have visions, or they get scared. You know, have a scary little bit. Yeah. Uh, again, not scary, but but cool and interesting. And I wrote here. It's just been fun to spend time with these characters, especially Miss Hart. I wrote here. You know, <laughs> seeing her fish out of water uh, act uh, really uh, makes the ending to this one a shock. As we have our first character death, Joe. It's a shame. Because she's the funniest. Sharon. I was having Sharon. so much fun with Sharon. And, uh, oh, by the way, this episode had the Mephisto name drop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're teasing fans with that. Confirmed. We yeah. said it. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and they do the countdown. They do the countdown to the wit, and they do the witch brew, and they get creative, and they put the ingredients. And, um, yeah. See, for me, I guess, like, I built it up a little bit more because, like, they said, oh, the trials consist of, uh, like, our biggest nightmare. So this was Jen's nightmare? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it, I, yeah, good question. Yeah, that's it's what was Jen's like, nightmare, yeah, I think, with I the Botox elements and, you know, these kinds of things. Like, yeah, but you're right. There was it a was lack supposed to be of... your biggest fear, and I thought they were going to play something with her drowning. They, they did talk the about kind her Kind of, like, with the glass, right? It was, like, kind of creeping in with the water. But they didn't, like you said, they didn't really play up on that. And it just kind of felt like a Disney thing. Yeah. We want a harder edge in this. Exactly. And this show doesn't seem like it can deliver the harder edge. That's edges. why I think for me, this episode was kind of the weakest because I was like, okay, now yeah. we're beginning the trials. It's going to be real, like, your deepest fucking worst nightmares. Yeah. And then we get kind of this little slapstick comedy. It's like, oh, my Botox and this and that. I'm like, okay. But I, I was hoping for a little bit more rougher. Yeah. And uh, to me, there's been more of an exploration of the comedy and the, it, it, the, jar, the genre of kind of horror and comedy. 
And of course, I prefer horror because that's where I come from. But it doesn't bother me, at least in the previous episode, episode two, where the witches are singing and chanting. I'm like, hey, these are this is where witches do. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to complain about, you know, witches chanting. And that's part of the witch's bag. It's not unusual or out of place. But as soon as you get an uh, instrument. But, as soon, as soon, <laughs> but, here, but then I'm like, oh, I get what you're saying when we get to episode four. Because I'm like, well, it takes over the whole damn thing. And this is just my personal hatred. Um, you know, of what you're doing here, it just grates on my ears. Uh, but I can understand other people enjoying it, you know. Um, but anyways, so um, let's move on here. We did, uh, so we didn't get to see Miss Hart's vision, I noted. So she does have a vision, but we don't see it. And I don't know what they're doing with Miss Hart. Is it, <laughs> was it really a bad draft pick, as Agatha <laughs> puts it at one point? And I'm like, hey, I I'm, think so. we're playing yeah. fantasy football right now. It's like every once in a while the show has, there's some good writers here, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, yeah, so she, we, Miss Hart's vision is something about Wanda, because she's like, Wanda, let him breathe. Because she, Wanda forces a dude back in WandaVision to like, suffocate. Mm -hmm. And so, like, her thing is like reliving that, that nightmare yes. of the past. But mm -hmm. yeah, and, um, I wrote here, surprising how solidly written it is, showing you can enjoy pretty much almost genre, almost any genre with worthwhile characters, with the writing supported by good acting and good direction. Because, again, I didn't give a shit about Desperate Housewives or whatever it's called, but yet I was enjoying the episode. Um, the quirky banter's good. Uh, the mystery of whatever it is kind of keeps you watching. And um, they do have the chibi model of the immersion circulator, the sous vide um, oh, stick. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the cheap one. Of course, you noticed that. Yeah. Yeah. They pulled it as out. As soon as they like, did, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, I know that only because of Alex. Yeah, that's not even the good Anova. <laughs> yeah. That's the bad Anova. Is it the one we have? No, that's not the No, one. you actually have the, be the, the better. better. It's the same one. brand, but yeah. the yours is like that. It would never work in that same Made sous vide. Delicious. It's the best way to cook uh, steaks. Some steaks. Well, you got to put a little more effort, but it's worth it. A little more planning, but it's great. Anyway, so then. I have some questions I wrote down here. Why did Agatha react that way when she saw the dark hold again uh, in the cradle? I think this was oh well she she gave up her son for the powers of the dark hold. Yeah. yeah. Um. And yeah. Okay. So I wrote here also the horror a bit toothless. So I might agree in the horror bits not being scary, but you know still having to be family friendly. Disney Plus that Marvel stuff it, as it's. Because so, they don't want to scare the little ones too much or the people that might be watching. It's a bit of a shame is it what is, I'm trying to I say. It is, because I feel like if you would have kept the same level bite. as two, like episode two, that was kind of creepy. Keep that kind of yeah. like throughout. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, we do get a doctor drowning a woman in a sink. And so it's like they, they, can't, they do show some of the stuff. They just, I guess, don't show enough of it. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of pitched as a campy witch comedy and not a dark, bleak psychodrama with blood, gore, and intense R-rated scenes, <laughs> which is what I wanted, yeah, right? But I'm not going to get that. <laughs> but when, I, when we get close to it, that's when I praise it. Anyways, but I have, to under, I have to be careful. It's like, do I fucking knock points off for that? You know, and, and for me, I don't really knock points off for it. But uh, so as long as they're doing well within what they're doing, which is a campy, you know, horror comedy with some exploration and touching on that. Yeah. So that's why I'm kind of a little higher rather than docking it for not being that. I like the clear premise. They definitely have a clear premise. It's like a puzzle bits each episode. Mm -hmm. So episode three, I think, is one of the strongest episodes. I'm going to go ahead and give episode three a... I think I liked it more than episode or about the same as episode two. I might get either a nine or an eight. I'm going to go eight. Episode three, eight. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's it's probably the, the three and two are the strongest ones of the of the series. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like the premise. I like the, the the direction, and I was really like hopeful at the end of this. It's like, oh, cool, we're gonna do these really cool things. Maybe we'll get more into like their nightmares and their past and their stuff. And so at the end of this episode, I was feeling real good. So yeah. I think I'm also going to like, man, I'm gonna make an Boy, was I fucking wrong, but <laughs> I'm gonna make an individual episode review yeah. and tell everybody how great it is. Yeah. Uh, for me, this one was going to be... Uh, this was on me because I was thinking something else. So I, uh, I'm between like a four or five, but I did like the little chemistry that was going on. But uh, If you're honest, uh, Yeah, one. four, because this was uh, the lowest one for me. Below average. Wow, okay. We got some, some differing opinions there. I like that. Uh, all right, episode four. If I can't reach you, 
Let my last song teach you. Go uh, ahead, you, you can't reach me. You and said, I'm, I refuse to learn shit it. from this one. I don't, I don't think this is like... This is Alice the Protector Witch's episode. Yeah, and so while the first one I f- thought was close enough to reality mm-hmm. uh, in a sense where it's like it's like the Desperate Housewives, them doing like back in time and wearing what looked like our costume rooms costumes <laughs> yes. it didn't look like people from the 70s it looked like someone who had never seen pictures from the 70s thought that they looked like in the 70s mm. and so it was just so out there that i just wasn't interested the entire way through um I, our gilf lover joe did you see uh the uh, uh the fortune teller she's banging in her outfit right joe? yeah especially when she pulls down to show the scar and she's showing like do you like liza minnelli <laughs> Uh, th- but uh, yeah, I, I I don't like it. And then they get into the the musical thing. I uh, I think I, I guess it's a cool practical effect. Oh, I, I like ch- the uh, creature. Yeah, but yeah. like that's gonna get it. Like what at limited points? It's just <clears throat> this was when reality came crashing down on me and going, oh, this is where the show was going. And I, look- I knew I knew Alex was gonna hate it as much as I did because it's like. It's that love thing where it's like, well, love will be sing the power of love and you will be protected. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it, I guess it was less the me- I mean, that I do hate that. But it's like it was less the message. And it's more like I didn't like any part, <laughs> any part. of the direction mm. of the art style. And I was yeah. terrified for the wrong reasons. Like, holy shit, I have to watch the rest of the season. And this is what <laughs> this is going to be from now on. So... <laughs> For me, yeah. I think it actually pre- three prepared me. I was like, okay, it's gonna be kind of campy. Yeah. In this. So going into this, like, okay, I expected it from watching the third one. So, oh, I love this. So Different yeah, I was opinions. watching this. Is like, okay, I like the way they like kind of set it up, but the execution I did not like. Mm-hmm. If they would have been like, oh, this was her cult, and this was like, oh, these were her followers. Cool story, cool premise, and stuff like that. It's like, oh, she tried to like array like open the mm-hmm. road and stuff. It's like, I love that stuff, but the execution is yeah. what kind of killed it for me. Me too. Uh, I think it was limited in scope. If you had shown us more of her actual mother yes. in the past yes. with her Doing cult some, members. Yeah, exactly. With this, Doing that kind of creepy give, stuff. Yeah, and yeah. lean into some of the camp creep. You can yeah. still go camp, but creep, you know. But it was all isolated to the fucking sound stage that they yeah, set up for their song sequence. Mm-hmm, and that's what kind of killed it for me as well. But I did kind of prepare myself. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, I like it. I like it. Where this is going? I like her backstory. We kind of uh, talk about it during the wine session. It's it. like, let's do something with this. Uh, we get a cool little demon at the end. But again, mm-hmm. the way it it was executed. <sighs> yeah, and, and I think for me, Alice's backstory was like the least interesting yeah. or the least compelling, and so that kind of plays out here. So, um, what do we what do we really learn here? Um, Let's see. This uh, is about... This learn- is the witch replacement. This is where Rio comes Rio in. Rio shows up. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. yeah so, right away, heart. we get Aubrey Plaza. Am I getting that? Audrey yeah. or Aubrey, Aubrey, Aubrey Plaza. And I'm sure everybody was happy. But for me, because everybody loves Aubrey Plaza, you guys tell me how great she is. And I see online, in- everything's positive about her. But I was just over here thinking about Ms. Hart. I was like, I, I want yeah, the 70s lady back. And uh, I'm like, what is this girl's deal? I don't really find her all that interesting or compelling with her, with her acting or whatever, whatever surrounding her, all the positive press. Um, I mean, she's fine. And uh, she has, uh, you know, history and chemistry with Agatha. We get more of that here. Agatha attempts to sabotage her um, with her goals in front of the others. Uh, and then the episode ends with Teen in Danger. Teen is... The name for the guy character because he does it every time he says Not his name yet. is uh, you can't hear it. So, but we'll get to that in the next episode. So, what would you rate this uh, episode for? Five for me again. Like I, I prepared myself after that. I was like, okay, we're gonna go for campy, whatever. But yeah, uh, so it was just like, what are we doing here during the musical yeah. stuff? Like, <laughs> five. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it feels like it was a cartoon, like a real, uh, like a, a live action that, cartoon, yeah. and it's like it's the, what we do. Yeah, it just didn't. Exactly. It, it just didn't work for me, and it, on any level. So this is well below average. I think it's a bad episode, like three. Like I, I originally 
fast forwarded through the music. You son and then of I a stopped. Bitch. I stopped and was like, but I should watch it. You should watch and it. And I did. Sometimes the the song will get you to change your mind. Well, and that's what I did. So it's like I originally did that, and then I fast forward and was like, well, let's just fucking see what they. And then it's like, oh, a confirmation. I did hate this entire thing. I don't think this was very well done. And I love musicals. It's uh, the just power not, of love. This is I the, had to watch it twice. And uh, I well because. I was going through it again, and I was like, I might as oh, I missed something. I might as well go through here. So two and a half times. Yeah. I liked it uh, less. The, the, so I originally, I would have gone a four. I, it's a three out of ten for me. Upon reflection, and as we adjust our scores as we go along here, I would have pre-adjusted this one down to a three out of ten. Little episode breakdown on it, though. Uh, let's jump into that. Uh, Aubrey Plaza joins the cast. We get the witch uh, creature curse song, right? Uh, Agatha, that boy isn't yours ending. So there's there's some good stuff here. That's, I think that's originally where I was going with the four. I like some of that stuff between Rio and Agatha and Teen. What is this developing yeah. here? You start to get some of that. Uh, the one witch uh, mother died on the road. She died on the tour. Why? She lit a, her hotel on fire because she's cursed. Well, her, her, mom, cursed. her mom said the road would save her, and she was attempting to save her daughter, essentially, and create this song which uh, yeah. can break the generational curse. Do more of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they did the thing where it's like as long as the song is playing, you're mostly protected from the curse, and that's why she made this big album. But then the mom, I guess, burned her hotel down and yeah, killed and herself. Yeah, and I still don't have that full connection there. We're like, ah, I understand. You know, <laughs> they didn't go in depth enough. And if we had got a little bit yes. of the backstory, I guess I would have understood a little bit. I would have much rather her, in, instead of doing any of this music thing, confronting her mother in a burning hotel. Yes. And like, that yeah, would have exactly. been, been awesome. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh, cool, let's do that. Would've and it's like, up. no, let's dress up. It's going to be so cool. Here's the timbre. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Tambourine. Oh, I would have I would have flipped out of here. Yeah, that's like, what are you Shut doing? the fuck up. <laughs> we need a witch replacement. The witch they summon, Rio. And it just so happens to be Rio. I do feel like Rio is manipulating some stuff behind the scenes oh, here. Sure. There's definitely something going on. Um, the deaf. team doesn't trust her. Yeah, there's rumors that she's deaf, which is what Thanos was, uh, you know, well, I guess this version of uh, Thanos is not, you know, in love with death, but um, in the MCU. But anyway, so you get your 70s vibe. You enter the house. You got lots of gems and rhinestones and browns and oranges. I, I hate that aesthetic anyway. <laughs> you know the kitchen there was avocado. Yeah. And uh, oh, uh, now I initially thought that the channeling which was channeling her mother but this is this is some really good level writing stuff where they're planting seeds for what's happening later on in the episode she's actually channeling the future and mm -hmm. in an, in a later episode she says i can't actually speak to the dead i made that part up i i have more visions of the yeah. future and kind of interpretations and she says something she says something like you know agatha don't or something like that uh and or no, uh, Alice, Alice don't. Alice. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what are you talking about? You know, and that's going to tie into episode five. So I was like, oh, okay. I like this. This is clever uh, um, seed planning that you're not going to get the first time until it kind of, uh, you know, unfolds here. Anyway, yeah, the other one was um, hmm? she heard whenever they first go recruit her. She's hearing that terrible noise. Mm -hmm. It was this episode. She hears it again. She's like, oh, it was terrible the first time. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> See, Joe's picking up on it. Rio visits Agatha, asks about her quest of power. Agatha turns on the mic, so all the other witches hear that she wants to kill them one by one. Yeah, like, you you get believe. your power. You I get really my body. <laughs> I was like, oh, come on. Whatever. <laughs> and then uh, she explains how she got there. Magic took the path of least resistance. I'm like, I don't know. What it is. But anyway, the team planes the record. One of the witches feels lighter. One of them burns, and then that, and then you draw the protection circle. Mm -hmm. and they have these burn marks, and they realize, oh, this is my family's generational curse. We're gonna have to break the curse. How do they break the curse, Joe? Singing, singing their hearts out. Yeah. But she has to like really sing. None of them know the really know the words or know how to play instruments, but somehow through the power of coven friendship, of love. Uh, protection spell. It protected you, and now it can protect us. So they sing the song. It annoys Angry Joe, and we move on. And down the witch's road, uh, when we just got that two episodes ago, it's like now I'm I'm here seeing what 
you know, all the other dudes complaining about songs. It's like, yeah, I get it. I mean, witches do this, but now I'm with you. This is annoying. Um, Maybe it could have been a different song or something. That would have been good. Uh, content, and this one's in a different style, to be fair. To be fair, <laughs> but no. Nah. Completing the song burns the cursed creature because the cursed creature's like, ah! and I'm like, oh, I like that. I wish they would have done something with that. I wish it lit they me on fire, too. <laughs> yeah. And so it came over, it lit her on fire. The creature was on fire. Alex was being lit on fire when listening to it. And then the piano. Uh, oh, Curse dispelled. Piano opens up. New path. Yes. Okay. Oh, but oh no, the the teen is hurt. He faints from glass in the gut. So you tell me, play that whole fucking song without noticing there's a, ga- a glass. In That's his what gut? you're supposed to do when you cool. get shot somewhere vital. Dumbass. You keep it to yourself till the end. Yeah. Right. It's movie 101. Say, hey, I call out the stupid shit. <laughs> movie 101. Of power and acolyte. I can't go on. Here. You guys go on with that. Fucking me. stupid. <laughs> All right, but Agatha <laughs> is showing the most concern. You know, uh, and she's like, don't. And don't, because two witches are kind of like, I don't know what the first witch implies by it. He's strong. He's like, maybe we should take his power and just leave him behind or move on. And then, of course, she says don't to Rio because Rio's over here trying to collect bodies. She's like, don't, because she cares about the teen or she lets that slip. Mm-hmm. And uh, the potion witch manages to save him since she kind of. Uh, in a previous episode, aligned her chakra or whatever you want to say, where she's uh, working she at uh, full capacity. Evil. Right. And the moment, and then they do that. She temporarily heals him. Then we have a moment where the it slows down. The episode slows down. They share their background stories. Okay. The potions, potions witch shares her story. The protection witch shares, you know, about all what just happened and her trauma with the, her mother. And then Jen shows some kindness and gives, or is it, um, yeah, she Jen gives something to Alice and she's like, it just smells nice. So they're being nice to each other and they're starting to have chemistry or come mm-hmm. together. Or the show's trying to make that. Anyways, Agatha's not there. Agatha's at the at teen side and making sure he wakes. Um, he eventually does. And he asks if she's the one that put the sigil on him. And she's like, no. Well, actually, I wouldn't know because, you know, the the ma- way that magic works is it would work on me, too. So um, the, then everybody shows their battle scars. And Agatha's like, you ever hear the Daughters of Liberty? And she's like, uh, no. And she's like, exactly. And I was like, all right, well, I'm not one of those channels that looks up Daughters <laughs> of Liberty, but that might be a you cool do reference. It do it your goddamn <laughs> self. And then I Rio like shares. <laughs> I love the Angry Joe show. Nice. Rio shares that she loves someone. Here's where I will share a theory. Obviously, she's talking about Agatha. It's really, really obvious. However, what do you think Rio had to do? She says, I had to do my job, and it hurt somebody. So clearly... That's why everybody's thinking Rio's death. I'm thinking Rio had to come over and claim Agatha's baby. son or uh, baby, Nicola, right? Nicola and it didn't have to do with Agatha saying, fuck this baby. I'm going to trade it for power in the dark hole. That's not what happened. It's, it's it has something different happened. And the child was hurt or whatever or died or something. And, and you know, she's begging and pleading with Rio not to do it. Uh, had and they to. had been in love before or something. So they already had yeah. a relationship. She's begging her, please don't do this. You know me, blind. don't take my child. It's like, well, I'm dead. I have to collect the body uh, and I'm collecting the body. And so that's why they butt heads. So mm-hmm. I think that's what's going on here. Uh, Agatha's child is, is dead and we get some more of that in the next episode. But um, Rio and Agatha embrace. They nearly kiss. And that's going to piss off some people, but I don't fuck. And, uh, and then... She stops though, and she says, "That boy isn't yours." Yeah, and that's 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 true. It's man. It's like, no. it, it, you know, it, she re- she thinks hope. maybe maybe yeah, she, maybe that's her son. But now that gives her okay. Well, if the boy's not my son, who is this? And I think Agatha figures it out. Um, what would you guys give that this one? Oh wait, that we already, yeah, we already did, did this. We already one. did yes. this one. Sorry. Um, the points for me were on that back end. I, I like some of that. Okay, yeah, moving saying that, and then like I kind of lead up, but again, the middle point, like you said, that. All right, moving fun. into the final episode for our mid-season review, episode five, "Darkest Hour: Wake of Thy Power." Um, what'd you guys think? We find out who he is. Surprise, Mephisto. That's correct, Joe. Mephisto. <laughs> We've been saying it. 
At the very end, we'll go straight to the end and we'll work our way back. Uh, is revealed to be Wiccan. The little boy from uh, Wanda Vision, Billy. one of one of the two boys, and it's one it's uh, Wanda's son, the magic user, not the quick one. Yeah, uh, and he, I don't know, his powers awaken uh, when he's reminded, and when they are having these conversations, and when he gets pissed off that Agatha essentially fucking br- kills, brutally kills one of the witches, kills Alice. Alice is just trying to help her. Because this is Agatha's trial. Agatha's trauma. Her mom is a fucking bitch. Just wanted to kill her. <laughs> so you're evil. You're an evil baby. I wanted to kill you right when you came out of me. And everybody else is like, damn, boy. She got some trauma. So they're kind of feeling sorry for her. And Alice, protection witch, wants to protect her. She sees her mother constantly, uh, you know, in this trial. Her mother is possessing her. And that's when she turns into... Uh, you know, Reagan from from Exorcist drooling on people and jumping on people. And I like those moments, the crab moments. Again, camp horror, not yeah. horror horror. Um, it would have been nice to lean into more horror horror. horror, horror. They did with Ouija board. With the Ouija board, I know. Joy has a Ouija board. You can watch our, our video <laughs> on that. <laughs> what do we call it? Yeah. Our, our Alone creepy. in the Dark video. Um, <clears throat> so... Yeah, and and that's kind of revealed uh, there, and it's like Agatha gets real nasty there towards the end. Mm -hmm. He's like, you know, is this what you do? You just kill people? You take advantage of them? And, and, you know, I'm not down for that. And she's like, are you sure? And then she walks off. Like, I don't know what was that supposed to mean. (laughs) You're just (laughs) like your mother. Clearly, she's not the mother. She knows now she knows. that this is uh, Wanda, Wanda's son. Um, what'd you guys think? I didn't love the the treehouse thing. I think it's again, it was one of those. It wasn't as bad as the previous one, but mm-hmm. I think there was a great opportunity here because I love the idea of them doing a Ouija board and there being a possession and a poltergeist. On paper, everything works for me here. Yeah, I just think that the direction and the execution just wasn't for me. Um, I mean, they they want you to be watching this with like your little kids or something, and yeah, it's I like, think so. and you know, Moose and I were watching it, and uh, <laughs> he wasn't interested; he just fell asleep, mm-hmm. and uh, I wanted to as he well. Sleeps. I, yeah, it's true, uh, and so it's just like I, I, it just didn't resonate with me. It was far too kitty and silly, and I just think it like every, watching it is like, man, this is such a wasted opportunity to get me back excited about the Marvel TV shows because I actually mm-hmm. like the premise, I like the way that everything here is written. I just the things from the page to the screen, the translation is just isn't working for me. So um, this one missed the mark. Uh, for me, I do. Yeah, I'm not excited to go jump on. Uh, right, let's go ratings then. Oh, go ahead. Let's go ratings. Uh, I think this one's a five. I like. I like a lot of the stuff that they did here. Um, but again, it's just like it just feels like a missed opportunity. Six for me. I'm gonna give it a point above because I did like the camping eighty slasher kind of vibe. I uh, always love those kinds of movies. Yeah, me too. Uh, the exorcism kind of feel with Linda Blair going like down, the, the creepiness. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some good moments that w- were in this in the show between like Teen and Agatha and Alice, and you could tell Alice and the Teen were kind of building something. Yeah, and get, it kind of pushed them over the edge. It's yeah. like, oh, we have a friendship is here. You could have a broom too. Mm-hmm. But then after that, we do get a broom away. scene, uh, CGI broom uh, stuff. What did y'all think of that? Uh, that was another thing I was going to bring up. I, that was fine. A little mm-hmm. E.T. Blood thing. Uh, but the, was it the Salem witches? Ah, yeah, the beginning. Yeah. Uh, they were catching up on them. I thought that was pretty cool. That was another yeah. cool scene. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious to see what they do if they do catch up. They have to catch up. Yeah. Do something. So no, they're, for, they're caught up now. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um but again, there were some trying to tropey things. Uh, six overall. Yeah, I think I'm more with OJ on this one. I think I did like it uh, a, a more and certainly better than the last episode. Um, I'm going to go mm, say, I'm between six and a seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay safe with a six. And uh, that's mainly coming from the beginning where we get a little bit of the creepy uh, Salem 7. I really enjoyed how they were kind of transitioning from their animal forms to their human forms. And they were still moving as animals as they were humans. You could tell one of them slithering. One of them's doing the fox thing. Um, And 
And then they do witches brooms. You know, you gotta have the brooms. Even the even the witches are like, ah, fuck this. We don't want to. You know, this is just a commercialized, simple, commercialized yeah, Halloween. And, you know, shit. domesticated motherfuckers. But they need. But so they try to just put some distance between them and the seven. And the road did not allow them. So it kind of flipped gravity on them and threw them back down. And they have to go to the next trial, which is where we got the camp and the slasher in the 80s. And I also liked that part with the exorcist stuff. So I'm going to go um, six out of six out of ten. Uh, all right. So let's go into the breakdown here. Um so we got so initially we see that fox uh you know to witch transition i thought that was cool you have a fox a raven and a snake the salem seven are coming for them in the comic book the salem seven are like children of of a agatha's husband or some some weird team it has nothing so they're doing something different with them um yeah, here they're the know. daughters of the witches that agatha had to kill off that were trying trying to kill her so they just are deemed revenge, and they're a coven that are just after them. Uh, these motherfuckers left the door open to the road. I don't know if I buy that because I saw them close the fucking door. Yeah, and they don't have to do trials, <laughs> and they just get to okay. do whatever they want. And it's yeah, like, and then that fucking witch is. I thought I they. I guess they sung. Da, 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 the fucking evil witches the with other the beetles portal. coming out of their mouth. Oh, where they brought in uh, uh, Rio. Oh, maybe you're right. I thought it was that oh, clever. portal. Yes. They, it's like, oh, they we're, did we're seem brought like that they were up coming or down. From, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I thought it was that one. Uh, children of the Killed Coven got that. Uh, witches hate brooms scene. I uh, thought it was funny. And they got some, some big-ass brooms. These are really thick sticks. Yeah, some of them were fucking heavy. I was yeah. like... And did you I notice Rio's? Rio's kind of looked like a scythe a little bit. So, again, teasing that, that death thing. Uh, teen swaps a stick. You got to swap sticks with uh, brooms with uh, Alice. So he's like, ah, oh, cool. And he's like, you know, obviously this is going to be worse for him when, when what happens at the end happens. Uh, one of the owl uh, Salem 7 shows up, attacks teen, and the, and the protection witch knocks her ass off with a big old fucking broom. And they fly. This like, get the fuck out of here. They're on our asses. So they fly off. They fly and they fly past the blood moon. That's where you get the ET. And also, Hocus Pocus did it too. So they're they're riffing off that. And uh, not the best screen screen event, but I didn't expect. I mean, it's okay, you know, for it's for this type enough, of budget. Whatever. Dark <laughs> enough, yeah. Uh, but anyway, eventually the road flips them upside down, forces them to land. And uh, if you notice, Rio's laughing like a witch because she she's having a good time. The other witches are scared and like ah, but Rio's like. Hey, like a witch laughs. Um, and then they see the next trial. Next house for the trial, avoiding uh, the beetle lady. There's a beetle lady that, that screams at them. And they enter the home. So, sleepover party. 80s. Agatha's trial. Then they got the Ouija board. Mm -hmm. Then they Joe's summon <laughs> Miss Hart. Mm -hmm. No, it was a trick. That, yeah. was, that was fun. <laughs> see, I, was like, oh, this, I haven't up. laughed as much as I laughed in like episode two. And I was like, man, I want to get some more. But... It, but one of them is this one where she's pretending to me Mrs. Hart. I was like, yeah, it's Mrs. Hart. Oh, you I was like, son she's actually a doing a pretty good impression. <laughs> was she good does impression. pretty good. <laughs> and uh, but she was faking it, and they're like, okay. But eventually they realize, oh, we have to punish Agatha. This is what the thing wants. The Ouija board is saying punish. So okay, but uh, who are they communicating with? We don't know right away. Instead, we get a bunch of screaming and yelling, which started to fucking annoy me right there so get, get past this and they go to punish her but then agatha is gone and then that's when we get that exorcist style thing and they realize oh shit she's just faking oh no she's present for real and uh so they they kind of you know deal with her crab walking and, and shit running around like a crazy person and then a ghost comes down everybody's like oh i fucking hate ghosts i was like joe does me too, too. And uh, it's Evan Nora Harkin, Harkness, Harkness, whatever you, Harkness, and uh, her mom. So we do get a, a, a scene where she's like, Mom, why do you hate me still? And you know, you're the, evil, the, the, pure the, evil. I should have killed you when you were born. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, you leave her here. Y'all go on. And so they actually attempt to leave her, but the group is mixed. Some want to leave, some don't. 
Um, it's the the bruise brew witch is like, all right, let's go. Uh, but the mother possesses her body again, and then Alice attempts to save her because she's feeling so. She actually uses some of her magic. She's got orange magic, and it pops the ghost out. But as soon as she pops out, so there's no excuse because I was like, okay, maybe she's doing this because the mother's still in her. No, I see the mother popped out of her. So once the mother pops out, Agatha appears to suck in her it's an power because this is Agatha's power. It's it's absorption, and so she starts absorbing her power. Holy shit! Is fucking Alice up? Alice is turning into the mummy, and killing her. And the other witches just stand around. They don't like, have power. What the fuck? I could have swore they have power. No, only Alice is the one. Not as, none I've of seen. Them. I've seen the 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 what is it the um. The divination older witch. The divination witch she has got a piss, and she did this one thing with her hand, she, and there yeah. was a little bit of spark. Yeah, just just a little bit. But and then Agatha also said, like, "Don't ever blast me because I will steal your power." Okay, they so know that's not. why they stand around, do nothing. Yeah, I was mad at them. I was like, "What the fuck are you doing? You're just standing around." Dean is the only one that tries to do something. He asks who the spirit is in the Ouija board, and turns out it's Nicholas Scratch. Mom, stop. And so he screams out, Nicholas Scratch. It knocks Agatha from her thing. Mm -hmm. And she and mom, stop. So there's something going on there, you know. And uh, this is tying into the backstory. And I'm curious, what do you think it is? Was Nicholas Scratch the one saying Punisher? Or was that the mother ghost possessing? Mother so ghost I think and then the that's kid. the mother ghost. Then the kid yes. came yeah. in. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't the kid from the beginning so mother goes punish kid mom stop and uh but alice looks dead it's too late alice fucking dies agatha just she says I, I didn't she says, i didn't she said i said i didn't yeah, yeah you did, you bitch. did. All you yeah, you did. and she walks away and uh and then i'm like well go fucking confront that bitch the team goes and confronts her how could you kill her like, so that's what it means to be a witch. Just kill people to serve your own agenda. And then she slowly turns around. She, she starts laughing. Are you sh are you sure? He's like, because I don't want to be a part of this. I'm not doing that. That's not for me. It's like, are you sure you're so much like your mother? So I don't know what's going on here. Is that really Agatha? She's so mad at him because of M M Maximoff. Why is she kind of do a turn here? Well, she's got power for the first time and. So maybe the it she's drunk on power a little bit. Well, she she's had no power. She she has had no purple, and now she's got a little bit. Maybe <clears> she, it's coming back to her. Hmm. This is like, this is a different. T what time? I don't even know what timeline this is. This time so, we're, we're good. It's after if you want to know how how everything fits together, so because these are fake Wanda's, ass kids, right? Wanda's kids were fake. Yes, in her mind. But I think what happened is then. There was portals opened to other dimensions, and See, I think right. in another right show or something, what? right? Yeah, <laughs> in one of the movies, and she went to go grab one of the kids. And this is all off screen. Probably this is maybe going to reveal some of it, maybe. They could uh, and be she's doing... trying to protect her kid by preventing him from revealing, you know, his childhood. Well, the Mephisto also had the kids at one period of time and so if she created he them out of magic mentioned in this show again and then when they when <laughs> they again? when okay, they just, when she dissolves the city mephisto could have grabbed her kids as leverage for the future anyways uh his powers <laughs> uh, seems to be controlling the other witches and he lets uh he knocks her into the sand pit uh quicksand and then he actually knocks the other two which is he into the sand pit. manipulates the other two yeah yeah because he's yeah. got some kind of powers notice rio is nowhere to be found because if she's deaf i don't think that he'd be able to mind control her as easily <laughs> as the other ones i guess her excuse is she's burying alice okay and uh and she's eating, she's, she eating, she's eating the body. Yeah. yeah. You should see me in a crown from Billy Eilish. Billy Eilish plays, and he's revealed to have powers. Had to look it up. I had to look this one up. You know, who the fuck is this? Well, Funko popped oh, into all this stuff weeks and weeks ago. I didn't Even see before it. the TV show came out, Funko said, "Look at this cool. We've Wiccan. got Wiccan and we've got Agatha." And Wait, I was like, what? "You fucking assholes!" So it's like. They, did they have Mephisto? No, they did not. Uh, but there, there has been. No but there has been, yeah. yeah. Wiccan, power awakens. Uh, within him, it's Billy Maximoff, the f a future young Avenger for y'all, um, Wiccan. And now, 
I re- it actually kind of improved some moments from previous episodes. Notice the letter M on his mouth. I'm like, motherfucker, it's been right there. Maximum, the fucking last name. It's been in front of us the whole time. Cool stuff. Um, but yeah, that's uh, we need more explanation. Who the fuck is he? Fake, real, another dimension replacement? Is that why Wanda's trying to hide him in his past because she doesn't want? It's gotta any be like a different, different version him. of it because he did not look like the kid from the show. Yeah, they yeah, got but I don't think they're gonna find. The Maybe you aged so find somebody similar. No. You aged differently in Mephisto's realm where he's been. That's why but it's I him think on that's his mouth. what it is. I think that he is a different dimension version, but we'll see. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I do think Rio is doing a lot of the manipulating behind the scenes. My theory is, you know, here's my theory: Agatha was responsible for her son's death in some way. Mm-hmm. Okay, whether it. I don't think it's intentionally. Yeah, monkey's paw. Everybody think. thinks it's intentionally. It's not intentionally. And then that's when, you know, Rio comes in as death, had to do her job, even though they had a relationship. That's why they're button heads. Um, and and then we get the payoff from the prediction, which it's Alice don't. And then in another episode, she says, try to save Agatha, you know, and it's Alice don't try to save Agatha if you put it all together from the two different lines and two different episodes. And it's her, you know, noticing that Alice is trying to save Agatha and she dies for it. And now the Agatha, that boy isn't yours, makes sense. And it kind of takes away all of her hope. Uh, and maybe that's why she's turning. Now they're like, all Fuck dead. You, you're not my son. I don't fucking like you. The next Go episode away. is going to be a tentacle monster that spits him back out, right? What? Oh, <laughs> uh, from uh, yeah, from uh, Rings of Power. It's the same little <laughs> the goop. Dark ones. They, yeah, they goop. got the black goop. No, I think that they are going to go into another trial. You know, he's knocking them in a trial. How he knew how to do that, I don't know. They're going to need to go- have a good explanation. So they'll be in a trial. Um, but how are they in the trial without Rio and... Teen. Well, I guess Rio, and he's Billy. not teen anymore. He's Wiccan now, and I don't know why he would help them at this point. So maybe he feels bad, and he'll go in there. Or maybe, fuck, I don't know. Do they realize that you really can't be my sucked thing, into quicksand and it's a myth? My thing is that these witches are getting killed off, and I think by uh, we're going to get witches killed off one by one until the end where it's just Agatha and fucking uh, Rio. Wiccan. And Rio. Mm-hmm. Okay, so these other two witches are eventually going to get taken out. Experience. That's my thing. Because I think eventually all the witches are going to come back. There's no fucking way that, that Miss Hart is, was in the series and then just taken out. You There's no that, way that Alice was set up in her own episode with her backstory instantly taken out. You think it's just Shenron at the end of the witches' road and they just be like, <laughs> bring everyone back. And they're like, fuck it, fine. Yes. Yeah, and that's going to get some <laughs> lower points from me. Unless you have like the most goddamn expert level explanation where I feel okay with it. It just feels cheap. It already feels cheap. It's about to feel cheap. Unless you've been traveling with death this whole time, then death real feels bad. So death, ah, there yeah. you go. And That's they, how death doesn't do the collection, because she feels bad because she did do the collection with her son. So here, I'm not gonna collect on you. But I do think, at least with Alice, she's just sucked. She's like a mummy. So if you give her back the power, if they can somehow convince Agatha to give her back her power, give a little bit, then I think Alice, buried, well, she can. Yeah. If she's buried by the next episode, yeah, that's yeah. gonna be a problem. But. The road realm dimension maybe works differently. I don't know. But I am fascinated. That's why I'm still having fun with the series because it's like I want to know how they're going to deal with the seven. How does the seven factor in? How does the real death thing work? Agatha's backstory and then eventually tying it into WandaVision with Wiccan. So yeah, that we, still has potential for yeah, me. Yeah, as we said before, like we understand it, the writing. and it's It's all there, but it's just not – we're not the – Target. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I, it's like if they if they brought to, this to me as like a first draft, it's like wow, this is really cool. Find new directors and let's go. It'll be yeah. amazing. Despite it not being my target, I am watching it with my girlfriend, so it's probably keeping me a little bit more positive because she's enjoying the hell out of it. That's the target market, and it's working. So uh, Moose doesn't like it. Moose is a doggy. Yeah, but he's got <laughs> great taste. Okay, <laughs> all right. You, did you subject Moose to Rings of Power? 
No, no I, would okay. I would never. I would never. That is away. animal that, that's abuse. abuse. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you back here uh, for how it wraps up. Yeah. Uh, once I th There's nine episodes. In. I thought it was eight. There's oh, nine episodes in this one. So uh, in more four weeks. more episodes, we'll see you. Yeah, three weeks because they do two episodes at the, the oh, do in a row on Halloween. Oh, okay. There you go. Mm. All right, guys. Well, that's kind of cool. I like two episode uh, ending because it that helps the ending have more impact and feel good and uh, complete story. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and we will see you guys on the next Angry Joe show. Bye, guys.